Coach, what's pleased you the most about the way the team has played the last couple of weeks? I think, you know, the, the way that uh, they stayed the course and, and the way they continued to come to work every day and, and up the ante in that regard, I think, you know, coming off of two tough losses, uh, just the resilience to come back and, and, and win two football games and you know, won, won four of the last six. And um, it just pleased the way we found a way uh, to win. What is it about Colin that has just taken – I mean, he's always been great, but back-to-back -back defensive players of the week just uh, playing out of his mind. Yeah, he's – um, he is. He's playing out of his mind. He's playing really fast, knows the defense really, really well, uh, very comfortable with everything that we're, we're doing. He's always in the right place, uh, has great instincts, and his effort is tremendous all the time. Um, just a tremendous motor, uh, one of the toughest kids in our program. And uh, he, he loves playing football, Scott. He loves ball, and it shows on Saturdays. He and the defense on this Saturday are going to be up against, uh, even though a young quarterback, a, a quarterback that seems like he's playing above his years in Preston Stone. Yes, yeah, super talented. A you know, kid that can absolutely throw the laces off of it. Uh, can run the football as well. And so you got to be able to defend you know, both of those things, obviously. But, yeah, really good player, uh, playing really, really well in their system and uh, kind of really perfect for, for what they want to do offensively. Also, he, he's been able to possess the ball, only six turnovers with all the times he's thrown it. Yeah, I think he's thrown 25 touchdowns and, you know, six interceptions on the year. He takes care of the football. That's the thing you notice. You know, manages the offense really, really well makes plays, um, distributes the ball. You know, there's six receivers that have caught, you know, nearly 20 balls or more, um, a, a lot of talent around him, uh, and, and he, he he spreads the wealth in that offense. You talk about spreading the wealth. They've got a couple of running backs from big programs from Miami and A&M transfers, and, and they've really paid off this year. Yeah, su super talented at running back. You know, as, as good a run, running backs as we'll see all year. You know, I don't think they have enough balls to go around uh, with their offense right now because they're they're really talented and, and um, you know at running back, at wide out, um, you know, big, physical, uh, veteran offensive line. You know, they're they're the complete package on offense. You know, there's really no no weaknesses uh, that, that you really see when you watch them on tape. Thanks, coach. Thanks, Scott. Wags. Coach, can you talk about the challenge of trying to take down SMU? I mean, it's obviously a road game. They're not going to be overlooking Navy because they have so much on the line. They can, they're can they playing for a berth in the American Athletic Conference Championship. Can you talk about the challenge your team faces in this one? Yeah, it's a tremendous challenge. This is a, probably the best SMU team that you know, I've seen since I've, I've been here. Um, they've gotten better and better as the year has gone along. Coach Lash has done a great job you know, with that roster. And I think the, the biggest improvement for them really is, you know, how they're playing defensively. Uh, they've always been pretty darn good on offense and, and uh, defense is caught up and they're, they're playing complimentary football, you know, playing really well on both sides, um, really disruptive on defense, uh, run the football effectively, very effectively offensively. And then they'll, they'll throw it over your head. You know, if you get enough guys in the box and, and, um, yeah, they're talented. Um, you know, if they do schematically on both sides of football, is challenging. Uh, playing on the road, obviously. Um, they've got a lot to play for. And, and so, that, like you said, Wags, they're, they're going to be up for the game. And uh, so we're, we're going to have to play down there perfect uh, to have a chance to win. So can you talk about, you know, what's at stake for your program? If you go on the road and beat a ranked SMU team that's undefeated in the conference, I mean, it would speak volumes for the progress of Navy football. You have a chance to do something special here, as they always say, shock the world somewhat. Can you talk about that? I mean, it, this is an opportunity like no other. Yeah, this is, there's no question about it. It's a tremendous opportunity. And these are the games you, you want to be able to play in November and uh, you know, to have a chance to, to you know, win our sixth game and become bowl eligible and, and uh, knock off the team at the top of our conference, the team that's leaving our conference. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a tremendous opportunity. I know our guys have a Big chip on our shoulder in regards to SMU. You know, we went out there last year defensively. Really, the last two times we've been out there and kind of got embarrassed. 
you know, got out physical, got embarrassed last year on the defense side of football. And, and so, you know, our kids know it's at stake. And uh, I think they're chomping at the bit. They'll be itching to play. Uh, and, and, th- and they'll get the best of us. I, I know that. Well, I mean, you talk about a sense of urgency. I mean, there's nothing more urgent than the situation you face. If you want to go to a bowl, you got to win this game. Just the way it shapes up with the bowls being selected before the Army-Navy game, you could be a bowl eligible at the end of the year and it might not matter. You're, you're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I don't think the, anything needs to be explained to the players about what this means. No, I don't think so. And, and you know, our goal is always 1-0. And uh, this week, it's, it's the same thing. This 1-0 can – uh, can really do a lot for our program, and, and uh, you know, we all want to we all want to get bowl eligible and, and have that opportunity. And, um, you know, it's not lost in our players. I, I promise you that. I'll pass it off, to Pete Matter. All right, I guess Wags is moderating now. Go ahead, Pete. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> uh, Coach, uh, when you look at them offensively, it may be as balanced as they've ever been. Even when they had Ulysses Bentley, who obviously is an old Miss now, uh, and, and was a really good back. Uh, do does the film and, and and analytics bear that out as you as you look at them? Yeah, I think you know they're an offense that will take what you give them. And uh, and you look at the running backs; the they got three running backs averaging over five yards a carry. You know, and they like I said earlier, they're they're really good up front. Uh, and what they do, they're big, they're physical, uh, they're they're very well coached. Um, and, you know, if you let them run the ball forty times a game, that's that's what they're going to do. And uh, you know, I think that's the sign of a great offense is, is one that takes what you give them and and can do both, you know, very effectively. Uh, but yeah, they they, they run it well. Uh, the things they do in in the play action pass game are, are really challenging. And so it's um it's an extremely tough offense to defend schematically and then you add you know the personnel and the talent that they have you know how well coached they are so it's it's a really good offense Collins the defensive player of the week for the second straight week as you've watched him grow what is it about him specifically within what you all ask him to do that now seemingly has him making plays virtually sideline to sideline uh within your defense right now yeah I don't think we have a more consistent player in our program, consistent in the way that he practices, uh, consistent in the, in the effort that he plays with. Uh, I think, you know, he's a junior now. He's played a lot of snaps, and he's uh, extremely comfortable in our defense. Um, he knows what's going on around, and he's a, a four-dimensional type player that, that, that we want around here. Um, and he plays our style, you know, in our brand of football. And uh, – you add on, he's just a really good football player with really good instincts. And, you know, he's, he's 208, 210 pounds, maybe, you know, 5'11". Um, but, he, but he plays like a giant there and just just tough, tough as nails. I uh, can't say enough good things about Colin. You mentioned something there that I was going to ask my follow-up question about him. Because of his size and because of the game itself, is the linebacker that maybe is a little bit lighter at that position – uh, because of the way offenses are spreading out for the most part. But a guy that has the kind of toughness that he certainly has, the mentality that he has, uh, is that linebacker able to survive better now within this game than maybe 10, 15 years ago? That probably wouldn't have been optimal. Yeah, I think that's a fair statement probably. You know, I think the thing that, that helps him in our defense is the guys he's got in front of him too. Uh, you know, the guys we talk about every week that probably don't get enough credit you know, for uh, for eating up blocks and keeping people off of you know, the second level and do a great job of, you know, gap integrity. And and uh, when you know guys are going to be in the right place, it becomes a little easier to go fix your gap, blitz your fit, those kind of things. And so, but uh, to answer your question, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, compared to the old 21, 22 personnel days, uh, it certainly helps a little bit. Um, but when we, when we have played teams that have gotten into bigger personnel groupings, you, you know, he, he survives uh, pretty well in there you know, in those situations too. Great. Thank you. Scott Wyckoff. Coach, how important is it to have receivers like Jaden Numbarger with their sure hands in this offense? That's great. I mean, I think he, you know, he, he's done a great job of catching the football. You know, he didn't get a whole lot of opportunities to do that, Scott. And uh, I think the thing that's great about Jaden is he's, you know, he, he's, um, He's just as good with the ball 
get the ball out of his hands. You know, he takes as much pride in that as he does everything else, you know, from blocking the perimeter to, you know, doing all the dirty work those guys have to do in the wide receiver room. Um, and he's a guy that, you know, when, when, when his teammates catch a ball or make a big play, I mean, he's, he's probably more excited about that than he is when, when he catches the ball. Uh, another guy that's just is what Navy football is all about, just unselfish, comes to work every day, and, and uh, is willing to do whatever he can to help our team you know, have success. When you talk about depth on this team, it seems like the defensive line, the level they're playing at, has been – added to by the great depth where guys have been able to come in and, and play well. Yeah, I think so. Um, and certainly, you know, they'll, they'll, all three of those guys that start for us are guys that, that can, they can roll now. Um, you could probably play the whole game and be fine with those guys unless it's you know, a game you're playing 80, 90 snaps, but uh, to keep them fresh, like we want to be able to do, you get to have sufficient backups to go in there. And, and those guys have done a great job in relieving those guys and, and not being a huge drop off. Uh, you know, when they go in there and get some young players that are so get, get some really valuable reps, they're going to continue to get better as well. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Wags. So dialing down a little bit on SMU, you mentioned the defense is better than it's been in the past. I mean, they're ranked very, very highly. What are you seeing out of this defense? What are they doing that is enabling them to they're ranked highly in both rush defense, pass defense? Looks like they're wreaking some havoc as far as turnovers and whatnot. Uh, what, what can you say about this SMU defense? Well, I think they're, I think they're really talented. Um, they're, they're aggressive. You know, like, like you said, they're, they're really disruptive, you know, really athletic up front. Um, they bring pressure quite a bit and they try to be disruptive. I think they, they've caused a ton of turnovers and got, gotten a lot of sacks this year and, and uh, they've been able to get people off track. Get them in the third and longest situations, and they, you know, take advantage of their ability to rush the quarterback. Um, they've been really good against the run uh, as well. So the, I mean, it's a very talented team. That's that's good at, at D line, the linebacker, and the secondary. Um, done a good job with that roster, and um, you know, Coach Simmons has done a great job with, with the defense in general. So you talk about always getting off to a good start, but it would seem in this game in particular, you do not want to fall behind. I mean, if you can get a lead and, and maybe you can then possess the ball, keep that offense off the field, that type of thing, how critical is it to get off to a fast start in this game in particular? I know it always is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's critical. And they're, they're really good at getting off the fast start, you know, offensively. You look at the season, and they've scored you know, 160 points in the first quarter. Um, wow. So I think it, it's taking people time to get used to their speed and what they're doing. And you know, they're not afraid to take shots, you know, early on in the game. And, uh, you know, I think to your point, what we do offensively is going to be critical, um, you know, for our defense. You know, we, we, we've got to sustain drives. You know, we've got to score points uh, when we get down the red zone. Um, we've got to maximize every possession that we have. But, yeah, absolutely, we've got, to, we've got to do the best job we can keeping our defense off the field as much as we can on Saturday to have a chance. So, obviously, we've talked about the offense all season. Um, mm. You know, what, what do you have to do to get to – do you feel like you're making progress, even though it seems like stop-start, Two yards, yeah. both one yard back. I mean, do you feel you're like you're making progress? Yeah, I mean, you, you, I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what it feels like. And you see glimpses of some really, really good things. You know, I mean, I thought East Carolina's defense was was one of the best we've seen all year. And, and you look, and you watch the first half, and we're moving the ball effectively. Um, we, we just we got to get out of our own way. You know, we're moving the ball. We, we turn it over twice. You know, in that first half, and, and really, really good field position. Uh, have another drive. We we get a penalty and what seems to be a positive play and, and getting on their side of the field again and that puts us in third and long. And, uh, you know we four procedural penalties. You know in that game, which are drive killers you know, for us. And, and uh, but we, you know, despite all of that, um, you, you see some positive things. You know, we mentioned the six penalties we had offensively, the two turnovers. Um, you know, and we, we tracked twenty nine times we lost leverage on blocks, which is something that's been a big for us and that we feel like we've, we've emphasized and, and we get better during the course of the week, but we got to be better on, on Saturdays, obviously. But you know, despite that, um, some positive things, but we when we don't get in our own way. Uh, Wags were a pretty decent offense and we can do some good things. And, you know, I had several misreads too. And I think uh, our line would tell you that, you know, if you're sitting right here and, and that, that, that could have been really good plays for us as well. So, there's a, there's a ton of meat on the bone, you know, with, with what we're doing offensively. And, 
know, I think we're doing the right things. We're, we're trying to get the ball to the right guys. And, um, we're trying to mix things up and keep people off track. And, and we just got to do a better job with the execution piece. And if we do that, then we, we, we'll sustain drives and we'll score points. But we got to get out of our own way. It's been the same thing all year. And there's times where, where we don't get in our way and we're pretty good. Uh, but, but we can't get in our own way. We can't make those kind of mistakes uh, right now offensively and have success and win games. So I'm going to be writing about the defensive line this week. I mean, obviously, we talked about them all season. It's been a solid unit. And, you know, Reed has filled in seamlessly for Jacob Busick and has become a big-time playmaker in his own right. But I guess, you know, what what is it about that group? I mean, it, is it just the veteran experience, especially with Biscuit and Cromwell? Um, or are they just – all really good at doing their jobs. I mean, what 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 can you say that's making this defensive line so effective? Well, I think there's a lot to be said for having two seniors up front that have played, you know, both those guys have played a ton of snaps for us. You know, I think Coach Hall does a tremendous job with those guys. Uh, I don't know if he gets enough credit for the job that he does, you know, as a defense line coach here with those guys. And they play extremely hard. You know, they, there's a ton of pride in, in that room and, and what they do. It's an unselfish group. Uh, they don't get enough credit, you know. If you know, if you kept track of assists uh, in football, you know, those guys would be leading our conference and just eating up blocks, you know, getting the ball cut off, um, leveraging the ball, you know, all the things that that you want your D line to do. Uh, those guys are always in the right place, it seems. Um, and I think you know both Biscuit and Clay are both really smart football players, um, and they've been in the system now for for four years, and uh, they know it like the back of their hand and. And uh, I've gotten really good at the things we ask them to do. Uh, but yeah, I can't, can't say enough good things about those guys. That's where it all starts, you know, up front for us. And I think Jay Reed has been tremendous. Uh, obviously, losing music, music was a blow. But even before that, we feel like Jay Reed was a, was a starter. Um, and he's came in and just done a phenomenal job. And he's one of those guys that he can play the whole game. You know, we try to give him a break, just to keep him as fresh as we possibly can. But. He's a guy that's got a great motor and, and can go all day long. And, and I think he's been tremendous. So they today was a uniform drop for Army Navy. It's got to be a tough situation for you as a coach because you got a huge game Saturday, and yet mm. already people are starting to think and talk Army Navy, which is yeah. not till December 9. How do you yeah. you know get the make sure that doesn't infiltrate your program? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I hate that we do it on uh, Monday before a game against another opponent, you know. And, and uh, I talked to him beforehand. I said, hey, we're going we're gonna to reveal the uniforms. That's great. Uh, and we'll enjoy that next week, you know, after SMU. So let's keep the main thing. The main thing is that's not going to – and I don't worry about that uh, affecting our, our focus for, for what we got in front of us. Our guys know that. And, um, you know, I, I wish we'd wait a week to do it, but it, it is what it is, and it won't be a distraction for us. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Bill. I've got two words for you on Lance this week. Black Friday. Pete Medhurst. <laughs> it's always about the cash, Scott. <laughs> That's right. Um, Brian, just a, one more thing on the defensive line. Not only do they occupy blocks, but they have an uncanny knack, as we've seen at times this year. They go make tackles, too. Um, and, and I think that's kind of a an underappreciated element of – that assignment. Most of the time, it's it as you mentioned earlier, it's to occupy blockers, allow linebackers run free. But you know, Cromwell and 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 Biscuit and Reed are are down there, guys' knees making tackles. Uh, mm -hmm. That kind of makes them the complete uh, defensive lineman uh, as well, does it not? Yeah, it does. They like said they do a great job with the gap and checker to be where they're supposed to be, which allows a lot of other guys to make plays. But you know, the, the plays that come to them, uh, those guys are making. Uh, not just tackles, but, you know, we had three sacks Saturday. Uh, Landon had one. Jay Reed had one. Clay had one. Get the ball knocked out. I think all three of those were, were three-man rush, you know, drop eight into coverage, and, and we can get pressure doing that. Uh, that's, a, that's a really good thing. So, yeah, those, those guys have been exceptional. Um, you know, the, the heart and soul of our of our football team and our, and our defensive unit, there's, there's no question about that. Everybody knows that in our program. And, you um, you know, they're the most highly respected group in our program because of the way they play and, and just uh, their demeanor, their unselfishness, you know, their toughness. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good group. There have been avenues where this season 
could have gone off the rails uh, for your team and, and for other teams that were in a, a similar situation. Why has this group been able to stick together, compartmentalize week after week, and at least put yourselves in a position now that if you if you can be successful Saturday, you do get a bold bid uh, out of this season when there were maybe a couple of turns that it could have gone a completely different way for you? Yeah, I think I think I've said this before. It just speaks to their character, and, and uh, you know the, these guys have a special bond here. They they care about each other. They play for each other. Um, they know how to handle adversity. Uh, it's a resilient group. Uh, they keep playing for each other, and and we got a bunch of guys that love playing football too, and that helps a lot, obviously. And, um, you know, I think. You may be right. It looked like it could have gone off the rails, but also I think our guys see how close you were to it being the other way as well. And they know the, um, you know, the possibilities of, of how good we can be and they see it. They know how close we are. And I think the senior group is a really good group. And it's, it's important for them to, to leave a mark and a legacy. And, and, and I think at the end of the day, they, they will uh, for this program moving forward. Um, but yeah, I couldn't be more pleased with the way that they've, uh, responded uh, to some adversity and stayed the course and all goes back to the way they work and, and their preparation and, and, you know, and how they view failure, you know, and, and bouncing back from it, learning from it and, and moving forward and um, never letting the, the game the week before affect uh, the next one. You know, and it's, that's what we talk about all the time is, is want to know whether we win or we lose. It's, it's on to the next one. And they've been able to do that, compartmentalize things. As evidenced by the stats, it, it's almost impossible to shut out opponents, it seems like, in college football now. The mm -hmm. fact that this group has now done it as many times as anybody in the country, um, you know, just that type of evolution, obviously, especially for PJ in his first year uh, as the coordinator with this group, um, just their evolution and, and how the season has gone for not only coach, but obviously players as well. You know, I think uh, Coach Volk and different staff have done a tremendous job. Um, you know, I think we've gotten a little bit better every week. You know, I think uh, particularly the last, you know, five, six games outside the Temple game, we've, we've played really, really good defense and uh, really clean defense. Um, you know, not a ton of mistakes. Uh, you know, I think the, the thing that they're doing that's really remarkable is, is if, you, if you watch how hard we play. Um, uh, the effort piece of things, and we talked about, um, being elite in that area, and, and I think we have been. I think they're having fun playing together right now. I think it's a group that, that trusts each other, and um, you don't have guys trying to do other guys' jobs on Saturdays. And you know the games that uh, you know we, we've not allowed a touchdown, we've not given up explosive plays, and, and that's always the case around here. We don't give up big X plays. Um, we make people earn what they get. They have a hard time doing it, which is going to be critical. You know this Saturday. Uh, it's an explosive football team like SMU is. Uh, we got to make people earn what they get and try to be disruptive in that process and get people behind the sticks and off track and um, you know, count on them making mistakes, you know, if they're on the field too long. And um, so um, it's been good to see the evolution and see us getting better. And, um, you know, there's, there's things that, that we could have done better on Saturday, which is exciting. There's things to build on, things that our guys know that they're going to have to do better. Uh, this week to have a chance to uh, to beat SMU, and um, you know they'll they'll build on the success they had this week and, and not rest on it. I know that. I know this group. So I'm excited to see uh, how we play this week. You've had a couple of young players experience some adversity at the quarterback position. Are, are you hoping they're taking notes on the two older guys who had experienced some adversity for you this season and uh, have now found a way, both of them, to come back and make positive impacts uh, for this team uh, as you head into this game? Yeah, I don't know. As a young quarterback, I don't know if there, it could be a better learning year uh, for a guy like Braxton, for example, who's, who's played snaps, uh, has watched Ty and watched our line, seen Blake and the things they've gone through and the way some things have come full circle and, um, and the way the guys have stayed the course and, and just a great example in, in leadership and how you handle your business and how you handle your role and, and all those things. So, yeah, it's been a, a great learning year for, for those guys. And I know the experience that, that Braxton's had is, is going to pay off for him in the future. You know, and, uh, whether this year has been more, what he hoped it would be or not, it, it, it's been good for him. And, and he's continued to get better uh, over the course of the last two weeks as well. So, really excited about him and his, his future here.
Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Pete. I just got one before we go. You mentioned him briefly. How much um, has Landon Robinson improved throughout the year? He's up to four sacks now, which is second yeah. on the team in, in limited playing time. Right. Four sacks is a nose, you know, and he's right. a guy that goes in for us a lot, you know, in, in, in third down situations. And yeah, I mean, he's a guy that had a tremendous offseason. We've talked about him a lot, you know, put on a bunch of weight, uh, kind of freakishly strong and athletic. Um, and you know, he's he's getting valuable, valuable reps, and he's been really, really solid when he's gone in. And he's another young player who's getting meaningful reps right now, they're gonna pay off in the years to come. And he's he's just gonna continue to get better and better.